capacity. Well, this is hot chocolate. Yeah. 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 <laughs>4-3. Yeah, it was 4-3. We made it really difficult for ourselves. We scored in the first 17 minutes and then uh, they equalised just before the half and then they got an early goal in the second half and then we scored in the last 20 minutes, the last two. But I didn't actually get to play against Chelsea, unfortunately. Oh. Um, when I came off in like the 75th, she came on. So we never actually got to okay. play against each other. I know. Rivalry. But, um, yeah, I obviously like gave her a quick handshake for and said okay. hi afterwards. But so you were nice? Yeah, we were nice. Okay. Always. No gossip here. No gossip. <laughs> and we've got to congratulate you for Dumo because you were one of the winners of the ones to watch at the Football Blacklist yeah, Awards. Which is very amazing. Cool. It was it was amazing. It was a bit of a surreal like kind of evening and to be like in the midst of so many amazing people in sport who are doing really good. You're amazing. Well done. Thanks. Good achievement. Coming up on today's show, we will be going over last weekend's FAWSL results. We'll be talking through the drama of the Conti Cup. And we also went to Liverpool to test out some of the squad's drawing skills. Not great. Plus, we'll be talking about everything from the world of football. <laughs> oh, we need to do an FAWSL quick roundup. So, from the weekend, so Manchester United beat Brighton 4 0, Bristol lost to Manchester City 5 0, Everton 3, Spurs 1, Arsenal 1, Liverpool 0, Birmingham 0, Chelsea 6. And that was an incredible assist from Millie Bright to Bethany England. Did, did you see that? Oh, yeah, that was yes. good. So that long good. all across. So yeah, good. And it was, it was like, all over social. This is what I love now, is when something like that happens, it gets like clipped and then straight away, it's just like yeah. everywhere for everyone to see. And then Millie Bright got a goal herself as well. So well done, Mills. <laughs> uh, and then West Ham 2, Reading 3. So there were a lot of goals over the weekend. Why do you think that is? Do you think it's got anything to do with the three games being in one week? That's a positive to have in sport. It's not you don't want to complain about ever like playing too much football because yeah, yeah. you've been in a position where you wanted to play more football and for it to be recognised for such a long period of time. But I do think it's equally it shows it's just the quality of the WSL. Mm -hmm. Like you, it's mad to think like the, the top end of the WSL is very very far from the bottom end yeah. of the WSL. And when you have those clashes come together, the scoreline does show that. So it shows that the investment is there, but it does need to be spread out as a whole. Yeah, yeah. I think Chelsea okay. Chelsea are on a bit of a roll at the moment. Um, yeah especially with all their strikers being on form and they were playing against a struggling side as well. Yeah. And in terms of like the Reading-West Ham game, it was a big scoreline and I think they, West Ham are going to be super disappointed at that. Yeah. Because um, it shouldn't have been a big scoreline. They're playing against 10 men for most of Well, exactly. Of yeah. So Reading went down to 10 players and West Ham were 2-0 up. Yeah. Mm. And then they managed to then pull it back and win 3-2. But then that's what we want, isn't it? Like that a bit of action, drama, yeah, that yeah, competitiveness yeah. in the WSL, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah no, definitely. I think um, also when you look at the majority of the goals, they scored in the second half. Mm. So I think now you're getting into to the season, teams are starting <laughs> to uh, find it difficult. <laughs> The, the teams that are used to playing in this league. You all right? <laughs> <laughs> you okay there? Just choking um, on the <laughs> um, They come into their own because they, they, they're naturally fitter. You know, teams like the Tottenham, who have just mm. come up, they're going to struggle with the pace of the league as, as you get further into yeah. sort of the latter stages of the game. So, so that's why, for me, I think there's going to be more oh, goals yeah. second up. Yeah, and West Ham will be disappointed because that's their third loss in a row, yeah. but they're playing Manchester United next. How do we see that going? <laughs> You're going to be biased, aren't <laughs> yeah. you? Yeah. No, you in a very <laughs> unprofessional, uh, unprofessional, in a very professional <laughs> bias to where I'm going to go, Man United are going to win. West Ham are a bit unfortunate in the runs that they've had, and I do think in the game they played against Reading, they should have won that. Mm. Like, playing and 10 players and not winning isn't really on, especially with Reading coming back from mm -hmm. that. But Man United, I say, are the stronger team and have proven to be like really impressive this season, especially in Lauren James. Mm -hmm. So I think from that sense, I do think that United will do better. What about Reading? Because the past few seasons, they've kind of been a, a mid-table team. What do they need to be doing to actually be competing for silverware? I don't, I don't think they're 
going to compete for silverware. I mean, anytime soon in terms of like this season or maybe next. But like some people have got them coming in, sort of top five position this season. I know some people are sort of backing them. I mean, look, they came back ten men, ten men down. They came back to win the game, which mm, yeah. shows a lot of grit Strength, and determination. Yeah. But they did. Do you not think so? Like, I feel like FA Cup. I think they've got a chance because they're doing that. They went to the semi-final last year, and that game was unfortunate. Like I thought they should have won that instead of West Ham, and I thought they would have brought a better final mm -hmm. to. Wembley out of like Man City definitely outdone mm -hmm. West Ham in that final but I think had they played Reading would have been a bit more even so in that like for the FA Cup I think they've got a good chance and yeah. if I was them I'd be looking towards that as a silverware opportunity because Chelsea and Arsenal are kind of running with the league I think yeah. Reading play some good football mm -hmm. and they're like I, I just think they've lost players like explosive players exciting yeah. players and they haven't really brought that in they don't don't seem to be sort of clicking and, and shooting off the, the way that they should be because they're a, I think they're a bit better football side than, than what it shows in the league yeah but it's always going to be so hard to compete with like the likes of City, Chelsea and Arsenal yeah. isn't it like for anyone really that's always going to be tough but speaking of goals we need to talk about the Conti Cup because there were a lot of goals <laughs> oh yeah. my god I think there were 60 goals in that week Crazy. of fixtures now we'll go over some of the big results from that so Arsenal 7 Bristol nil, Manchester United 11, Leicester 1, Reading 6, Palace nil, Blackburn Rovers nil, Liverpool 6. I mean, so many goals. Is that kind of saying something about the Conti Cup? Does it still have a place in women's football or, or is it something that we should scrap? No, I think it's still got a place. I think it has to, especially for the teams that are obviously in uh, the Championship. Yeah. You've got to be wanting to, to play in that competition and, and put out your your strongest sides and, and try and compete because that's when you can play the uh, WSL. You don't like them, no? The WSL <laughs> team. Um, so hates the Conti Cup. <laughs> hates the Conti Cup, this one. Um, so, so yeah, for me, it's, it's definitely still got a place. Um, but it's obviously an opportunity for, for teams like Arsenal, Chelsea, whoever, to, to play their youngsters and see if they're good enough. Yeah, I mean... That's the thing though, doesn't it show the gap between the WSL and the Championship, especially when, I, I think the problem with it is, is when you're seeing that many goals in a game, it's almost a little bit, oh, I don't know, it can be yeah. a bit... I, yeah, I think watch. so, United won 11-1, I think that's the crazy scoreline to have, like, yeah. especially yeah. if they're bringing out their youngsters and the other team is bringing out their best team, I don't, it shows you a massive gap, so I think... It's good in the sense that you want to bring in youngsters and you want to give them the minutes and the opportunity to play because you've got to have a, like a, some kind of development program to eventually get them to be the top of the players. But at the same time, is that you don't want a competition which just heavily favours or becomes like a yeah, testing ground for the top clubs. Then how 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 else are the championship clubs ever going to test players. themselves to see if they if they're yeah, looking yeah. to get promoted yeah. into the WSL? Yeah. Then you're never going to be better unless you played a better size. Well, yeah. Also, so if, you're, if you're sitting in a team that's lower down than the WSL, even though you know you walk into, into this as underdogs, I guarantee all those players are going to want to play top teams. Yeah. Just for a chance to play against top players. Right, now, we all know that Liverpool are struggling massively this season. What's going on? What's going wrong? What's not working for them? What do we think? I don't really know. Defensively, it's just a bit. It's a bit of a disaster. I can't remember who they played the other day, but it took two, two or three passes to get to their back line and then a goal. They played Arsenal. It was it was yeah, the Arsenal yeah, game. Arsenal. Yeah, it took three passes to get to their back line from Leah Williamson. Yeah, which is just. I just find <laughs> it really frustrating because of the fact that Liverpool's men's teams are champions of Europe, and they talk. They're like, oh, we're tighter race. We're mm -hmm. going to win the title, but I'm so just put some same energy into yeah. your women's team like how they double the, the bottom of the WSL and they haven't won yeah. a WSL game so far like it's just really frustrating to see especially with the history Liverpool have like yeah. Liverpool have got really important a strong history in the WSL but they've just kind of gone really downhill in the last couple of years and it's just so frustrating to see especially when you see all the other clubs like you know Chelsea now just got Sanka and you know Man City are doing amazing I, know. I don't think she needs to be there though I, I think they're a very good attacking front already of course and yeah I think demonstrate from the fact that how Millie Bryant and, and Beth England and Frank Herbie, I think they already gel so well. Mm -hmm. I see it differently. I, I, when I look at Chelsea, I see that they create a lot, mm -hmm. but they don't have to finish. Mm -hmm. um, I know they just come away with a 6-0 win, but 
they'd create so many opportunities if they had someone that just put the ball in the back of the net constantly, like a goal scorer that just that's all they feed off of. Yeah. And she is that. So I think Emma's looked at that and thought, you know, where are we lacking? The squad is good. And also in training, when you bring over someone, like if I look back at when we played for Fulham and the Norwegian players that came over, Marianne Pettersson, Morgan Horganes, they weren't like household names to people in England, yeah. but they were massive in Norway. And they came and they changed the whole way we trained yeah. and the whole way that we looked at things. So I think Sam Kerr will make Beth England a better player. I think she'll make G a better player in terms, I think G would love just because she's so clever. I, I like the way she plays, um, finding people, creating yeah. space. She, because she's just such a simple player, Sam Kerr, that she just wants to stay near the goal and score. <laughs> <laughs> really, <laughs> where like you see Frank Herby wants to drop deep, Beth England wants to drop deep, um, Backman she wants to come and get the ball. They've got loads of players that are so technically gifted, yeah. mm. but I think the one thing that they'd be lacking at the moment is someone to put the ball in the back of the net. Yeah, I mean, it's going to make them such a force, isn't it? Because an already good squad, and then you bring in someone like Sam Kerr and Oh, they're going to be scary. Yeah, also, like they're gunning to win the league this season, which yeah. means they want Champions League next season, which means they're going to be the squad. I reckon they win the league this season. Yeah, it's well, it's looking... Say it again. I'm trying not to hear that. Anyway, um, <laughs> back to Liverpool. <laughs> um, they've actually only scored one goal yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. this season. One goal. That is pretty bad. I mean, are they luck lacking foul firepower even? Like, what? what is it? Do you think What's it's a case wrong? of like financial backing, lack of, or...? Um, I don't know. To be honest, I haven't watched Liverpool and I haven't seen them that much. I mean, I, I think they were unlucky in the uh, the Merseyside derby. Mm. The, I mean, the goalkeeper sort of error. And it happens in football. But like to to lose a, a game on that, you you just be gutted. And sometimes when the luck's not going with you, that's just just how it turns out. But yeah, I don't I don't really know. To be honest, um, you know, it's just. Obviously, they've got a young manager. She's worked there for a long time. She'll so she know the players. But it's just it's not clicking. And yeah. sometimes it's easy for to look from the outside, but really you need to know, you know, on the inside, how are they feeling? Because the more you lose, then obviously confidence and stuff like but that. But it just so. means like the lack of urgency. It's like the fact that, you mm. know, if this was Chelsea or Arsenal and they would lose like three or four games in a row, people would be on them very quickly or they would be on themselves very quickly. They'd be like, something needs to be done. Mm -hmm. And like for Liverpool just to be in this form for a very long period of time and it seems like from the outside there's not much changing on like them to yeah, make it better. But, That's the only But then I, I think yeah. Liverpool went through their, oh, I can't remember what year it was where they won the league and, yeah. and um, went through that period where they had a lot of back in there. Yeah. They obviously, then it dropped out. It isn't the same as Arsenal and, and Chelsea in the way that they see football, yeah. um, in my opinion. Um, so for them, they need to be better, obviously. Yeah, if Liverpool said. drop out of the league, that's, that's, crazy. That, that's, yeah. that's crazy. But also, what does it say about Liverpool Football Club? Liverpool yeah, Football absolutely. Club won't want that to happen. So, But still, you yeah. need to give a young manager time into the job to, to sort of find, find the right way for her team to play. So yeah. hopefully it, it clicks and they start getting points because it's close. There's about three or four teams down there that mm -hmm. are going to be battling. But as a player, how hard is it to come back from so many losses and, and to get your confidence going? Because it must take its toll, surely. You just need one win, I think, and then you can kick on from there. But when you get stuck in a rut, it's like, it's just a bit heavy on the heart, yeah. walking yeah. out, you know? I think it's also what the environment is, which, which none of us will know what it's like in their training camp yeah. because if that environment goes then and you're losing then you're in real trouble yeah. but if it's still a place where people are believing they can get themselves out of trouble then you know they, they've got every chance <laughs> exactly <Yeah>. exactly, <laughs> exactly. Uh, rachel so you were the first registered professional female footballer in england wow. which is pushed them out of the way to sign it now, <laughs> <laughs> amazing what is it like for you now seeing the FAWSL being a fully professional league? Um, I think it's fantastic. I mean, obviously that's, that's where we always would have hoped mm. that women's football would go. I think the players now have the opportunity, the best opportunity, to go and take women's football to another level. Um, 
you know, it was fantastic. If I look back at like Fulham and, and that opportunity that we had then, it was brilliant, but we didn't last three seasons, four seasons, I can't even remember. But, you know, we understood why, you know, it, it wasn't going to continue because mm -hmm. Fulham were, you know, Mohamed Al Fayed uh, went to watch, he watched the, uh, the World Cup in America, I think it was 99. Uh, and saw how massive women's football was, and, and then the talk was that obviously that's that's not what we call them. We call them the FA. <laughs> we're making a uh, professional league. You know, you stay true. I mean, we won we won the treble. We we won we got up the leagues. We won the treble. We've done everything. But obviously, the FA didn't make the league. So mm -hmm. then I think the men's team were I think they were relegated or close to relegation. So if you're running a business that's actually not bringing anything in yeah. what's the point in keeping it going so I could totally understand and all the players could totally understand when um, when we weren't kept on as, as pros but um, at that time it was hard a lot of a lot of good players stopped playing mm -hmm. because they thought what is the point so to now see many years later that it's now fully professional you know, that is fantastic. But don't you think it's quite weird now that a lot of the younger players and, and going forward, the future players, they won't kind of know what it was like because they're just going to know, especially in the WSL, know it as being professional football and, and that's it. Is that quite weird for you in a way? Well, I suppose that's, I mean, if you look at men's football, it's the same. Yeah. You don't know, you know, the, the players that have all gone before yeah. us, what they went through. And I suppose that's this the same in women's football. Um, I suppose it's important to make sure we keep reminding people of the history because of it is a minority sport. Right, Rachel, we're going to do some quick fire questions. Okay. <laughs> Jayla's <laughs> like, what? what? Why are you singing, you weird women? <laughs> right, league or Champions League? Um, the league. Quick fire, Rachel. I know, I'm like, I can't do quick fire. <laughs> You've never met me before. Arsenal or Lionesses? Oh, that's harsh, man. I'm not answering that. Oh. Oh. Right, nice. Rapino or Bronze? Uh, Rapino, sorry, Lou. Oh, Rachel, that's scandalous. Well, no, so this is an attacker. I'm, I like attackers. Okay. <laughs> okay. Best player you've ever played with? Marianne Petterson for Norway and Fulham. Who was your hero growing up? Ian Wright. Oh, that's the quickest one, yeah? You know that one. Uh, who was your toughest opponent? Um, probably Germany. Best career moment? Ooh. Well, it's been so many. Oh, <laughs> I'm just so talented. I know, I know. Um, probably that 100 cap. Best goal you've ever scored? I would go for the goal against Birmingham in the Conti Cup final. Why? Why? Um, <laughs> So, Jane Ludlow had been annoying me for pretty much most of the game. <laughs> <laughs> and then, uh, moments before, she passed the ball to me, and it's like an easy pass, and she smashed it at me, and it ran off the pitch, and I tried to get it, and fell into the, uh, like the hoardings and slid down it and hurt myself, but she tried to brave it. Mm. Then she passed the next ball to me and smashed it at me again. Worst pass ever. And it came to my shin, but it kind of helped, because as it came to my shin, it bounced up, it turned, flicked, and swallowed it in the top corner. Ooh. I think it was because I was angry. So uh, thanks, Jane, for it. Yeah. <laughs> a bit of feel behind it. Yeah. I know, yeah, you've got to have that, innit? I love Jane. Um, right, Yorkshire tea or PG tips? I mean, I know your answer because you don't like tea. Yeah, I'm oh, sorry. I'm sorry. You're like, why did you invite her? <laughs> <laughs> what have you got there? Yeah. Do you like coffee? No. <gasps> hot drinks? Hot chocolate. Oh, yeah, I'm a hot yeah. chocolate girl. Yeah, yeah. What do you think's in here, Rachel? Oh. I'm lying, I'm lying, it's tea. <laughs> um, right, we're going to talk about stuff happening off the pitch as well. So, I don't know if you guys have seen this, but the FAWSL have said that they are open to increasing the salary cap to attract some bigger players, which is interesting. So, currently, they're only permitted to spend 40% of their turnover on wages. Now... The USA's NWSL has upped its salary cap by nearly 20%, which is interesting. Do you think that having a salary cap in any way kind of halts the progress of women's football here at all? I think just saying you can pay whoever, however much you want, it's not sustainable in the long run. And it puts certain teams at a disadvantage, like Brighton, uh -huh. example, yeah. for example, wouldn't be paying, wouldn't have the same kind of flexibility in terms of finances mm -hmm. as like I don't know, Arsenal or Chelsea would have. So I think there's some level of wisdom behind it because it kind of gives people somewhat of a level playing field. I think there's, 
I can see like an argument for and against. I'm with you on sustainability. I think you know, even when you're looking at playing at um, you know the men's stadiums and and, and you know uh, the North London derby, 38,000 is fantastic. But you've got to sell out your home ground. You've got to, yeah. you know, that that for me is is first. You've got to make sure that that's all sustainable, and you're bringing it in like a business. You you want to be bringing back the money, making sure that you you can keep running before before you sort of uh, you know go and make everything free and open. But then on the quality side of it, you want there to be no barrier. But for me, no, I think sustainability. Um, you can already attract the big names. That's why well, you know really Sam right. Kerr coming over. So I think the the history of, of football in this country will bring bring people to want to play here. And obviously yeah. the big clubs playing in the Champions League. It, it's just I suppose when you look at it, it's not fair as it is really because yeah. it's forty percent of, of the turnover. Well, Arsenal's turnover compared to Bristol's turnover. You know I don't know it, but I'm sure they're very different. Yeah. Surely somewhere like Leon, they're wage bill. Surely they're spending a fortune, right? You'd think so. When you yeah. look at the roster that they have, mm. but I have absolutely no idea. But then Lee are not equally winning at the same time. So I think yeah. if you're spending loads of money oh. and not winning, it'd be a bit of a problem. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But if you're still doing considerably well, then yeah. spend how much you want. So you don't want a huge squad, because no. then, you know, players are just never going to get paid. Yeah. Play, yeah. So I think, I think it was, you know, Joe at Arsenal sort of said, you know, we're keeping this squad, mm -hmm. we can rotate this squad, everybody. Because you what you don't want is people to not feel valued and yeah. not not know what it is that they're they're there for. You know, you you're quite clearly a squad player because then through the camp and, and the squad that brings a little you know divide between you. Yeah. yeah. So um, so you want to make sure that that there are you know everybody's got the best opportunity of performing well in training to be able to get that shirt. Um, but then if you look at the budgets and you don't want one player run a lot of money and somebody oh. on. Yeah, that's yeah. what I mean. I feel like it'll make teams a bit awkward. Do you know that? But right? then that happens well. in men's football, right? Like some I mean, they're on players ridiculous run money insane. anyway. Yeah. So, like, if someone's 100,000 a week and everyone's 120, I don't think it matters so much. It only. It only it's like ego, it, though, isn't it? Yeah, it only doesn't it matter if you're performing. That is true. If, you, if, you're, if you're on a lot of money and you're not performing... Then but imagine like if you're equally girl. performing, the, like WSL, for example, say you're in Arsenal or Chelsea, and you're earning so-and-so, and you know like someone who's also on the team has been bought, for example, say the likes mm -hmm. of like Rapino or yeah, Lucy yeah. Bonds came mm -hmm. over because there wasn't a cap, and they were getting paid in the regions of like thousands and thousands per like, month a week. It, I, I don't know, I, does, wouldn't yeah, that I mean, unsettle a team a little bit? Well, in men's football, you, I suppose you would have the opportunity because the money would be there. If there's yeah. a cap there, yeah. then that player, you know, you've got to change something. Yeah. So, yeah, it's going to it's going to be difficult, but I suppose that's the manager's job to, to make sure yeah. that they can I guess keep the everyone happy. The argument is if, like, a team here to bring in Rapino or Lucy Bonds or How something like that. that well, one, it would cost a lot, and obviously they'd have to pay a lot, but at the same yeah. time, like, the revenue that they would get, because people would come and watch that those players. Well, that's mm -hmm. what you've got to look at Sam Kerr, well, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah. The, what, what you're going to be looking at is people, obviously, you know, the, the media attention for it, yeah. not just yeah. media in England, but media around oh, the yeah. world now is talking about Chelsea, getting yeah, yeah, Chelsea's yeah. name well, out because there. These players, when they get to that level, are a brand now, yeah. mm -hmm. you know? Like, they come, again, like men's football, like, sometimes these players come because, like Pogba, because they're such yeah. a big name and because what they attract and what they bring to the club. So, yeah. interesting. Anyway, any Aluko has left Juventus. So she tweeted, I don't know if you guys saw it, and she said thank you to everyone, the players, the staff, everyone there. Um, but she said, I'll leave Italy with good memories and special achievements for new opportunities, ambitions, and further happiness back in the UK. So what is she doing? What do we think? She, is she going to... Because she's not retired. That's not her retiring. So is she going to come back here and play football? I don't know. I haven't spoke to her, but I mean... Have I you not? I was going to say, Rachel, we had I said that before you, like, <laughs> before you thought that I knew anything. <laughs> but I would say that if any comes back, surely she's only going to want to come back to London. Therefore, you're looking at a London side. I'd, I'd be looking at West Ham or Tottenham. Tottenham um, yeah. uh, that, that's, that's the only way if I could... Sort of see her. I can't see her going back to Chelsea, I can't mm -hmm. see her going to Arsenal. I think there's more opportunities for her as a person in, yeah, in, in yeah. London. Obviously, she's lived there for so long, she's probably yeah. still got a house there. So, um, you know, if she's going to come back and play, I would I would say it's one of those two clubs. But it's like either or, like 
part of me really wants her to play because I really want to go and yeah, watch her play. I'm but then at the same time, she's done so well. Italy's kind of topped it off by winning the league and just doing... Like, she's won, what? Yeah, but then nothing. trophies in the If she was going to retire, she would have said it. That is true. Any can you tell us? Any can you just call us up and tell us? Yeah, Comment below. Yeah, I mean, I heard an interview with her the other day and she was being quite, like, mysterious about it. And she was kind of saying, like, look... I'm coming back, whether it's to play football or work in football. So I'm like, what would she be working at? I've basically read into this a lot, clearly. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> what would she do? Does that mean media? More media do you think she'd go into coaching? Or well, that's what I, don't I mean. Know her um, no, I think maybe some sort of sort of governance within the game. Um, mm. I think any would be really, really good at. Um, I couldn't see her coaching. <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh, she's yeah. right. <laughs> what do you know? She's gonna come back and be a coach, but I couldn't. I couldn't really see any doing that. Um, but I think, yeah. I mean, obviously with her law background, I think yeah. something, something along those lines, maybe, a, maybe sort of looking. I don't know, backroom sort of GMs or, or, or something like that. I think she'd be really good at it. So, um, but she, she would be a strong representative, like in the FA or something. Oh, 100%. You know, yeah, so. yeah, yeah. I think she, she'd think be really good for any organiser. Yeah. And all you yeah. hear is she, she speaks really, speaks really well. well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I but just the experiences that, yeah. that, that she would you have. You can't buy that kind of experience no. or those expertise no. as a whole. So. No, definitely not. Definitely not. But I, I still think. Yeah, I still think she'll come back and play whilst doing something else, probably on the side. So, interesting. We shall see. I look forward to finding out. Right now, I want to talk to one of you guys about your impact in football and what you're up to. Fatimo, this is you. Um, firstly, how did you get into football and media in the first place? Um, football media kind of came off the back of playing football for a bit and then stopped, like not playing for a little while, and okay. I was like. And it was kind of like trial and error. I finished uni, I thought I wanted to be a PE teacher, and then I realised I didn't like teaching. <laughs> so I was like, this is okay, really work. crucial. <laughs> yep, <laughs> crucial part to it. Then I went into youth work, which I really enjoy and I still mm. do. And then I was like, oh, but I still like to do sports. And then I, I like ran in my WhatsApp groups about who should be bought and who should be sold and that kind of general yeah, stuff. Yeah. So I guess it came off the back of that in a really interesting way. But yeah, no, it's been a lot of fun. I've really enjoyed it. Like, I think it's. I think I, I'm generally a fan of football, firstly, and one thing I've learned is just to maybe hold back a little bit and just be like, not always championing yeah. like my team as such, but championing football as a whole. Was Man there? United, Man yeah. United. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> 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 but, but okay, funny story though, when I was younger, I, so Rach Yank is one of the first players I saw in women's football. Sorry. So, uh, <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> That's a good story. So I was like, to my mum, I was like, she was like general buying football shirts to my siblings, and I was like, I really want a football mm. shirt but I want Rachel Yankee on there, but I want on United shirts. So my oh. brother kind of just looked at me like, I don't think this is going to work. And I was like, and this is when I was like 10 days into my commitment of like supporting United, mm. because I just discovered them like 10 days before that. So I was like, I can't leave United just yet, but I also want Rachel Yankee on a shirt. So I don't know how, I didn't get United shirt with Rachel Yankee. I just, oh. like, just going to say, I, I played for United. United. <laughs> I know, I didn't. Nobody would let me have that, but it would have been really good if they did. But um, yeah. Why did you... So you stopped playing football for a while? Yeah, yeah. Did you pick it up? So I, I started, um, standard story, I started playing football in school. PE teachers were like, oh, you're doing all right, you should yeah, maybe yeah. do it outside of school. And then I kind of went searching for a club, found one that was a little trek out of it, but a couple of trains, a couple of buses, you're kind of there already. Um, and then I started playing for them all of pre-season, and then we played the first game of the season. And then it was during that game we found out that there was actually like a headwear ban that the FA had. And the coach come up to me and they're like, oh, can we just have a quiet word with you? And they're like, um, the situation is you can't actually wear a headscarf because rules are kind of like you can't wear any headwear. And I was like, oh, it's a bit awkward. So I, they were literally just said to be like, point blank, you have a choice. So you either wear a scarf and not play or you bench or you play. And I was like, um, so I'm not going to play. But the next game I showed up to, the, that ref was okay to let me play. And it was kind of like my coach looked into it and it was like, it was a ban, but it was also being looked into to being changed. It was at the discretion of like, the referee and stuff. So he pretty much just said to me, look, I can't keep you. I can't. It wasn't like, it's not like how it is now where you have like 15, 16 girls who are part of a team mm. or 20. It's like you just about have 11 and you're yeah, really yeah, yeah, yeah. holding on to them. So I can't take up a space in the minibus. So yeah, I left after like two games and then. How long ago was this? Uh, back in uh, 2012, maybe 13. It's mad, it's mad, it's like yesterday. <laughs> yeah, yeah, not that long ago, but still reasonably long ago. Yeah, and then I, I stopped playing, then I went to uni. 
Um, and then a typical like uh, a typical kind of resentment where I was like, I've never played football again. I'm yeah. gonna stop playing netball. And then I realised I was really bad at netball. <laughs> <laughs> netball was really hard. Netball's hard. And then I still stuck with it though. Just played netball for a bit whilst I was at uni. And then now I play football now. So I joined the team recently. And yeah, it's on, it's all right now. But so when that first happened. Weird. Did that not kind of shape your perspective of football? Did it didn't not give you quite a negative view at the time? Yeah, it definitely did because I kind of came from like the typical household that my mum was like, "You're really gonna waste money on a train to go in and play football? Like I don't understand. I've got a garden outside and there's plenty of fields and you've got brothers. Like, is there any point to this?" So I was already arguing against that in that sense. And then for me to show up to football and like football doesn't really want me to play football mm -hmm. was a bit frustrating. Mm -hmm. So I didn't. I never really. <laughs> Shared, I kind of just went back to school and they were like, what do you do in the summer? I was like, nothing, just played outside, kind of thing. Just played it down as how it was. And yeah, it did kind of make, I didn't look into playing football again. I didn't think about it. I just thought, cool, that's not for me. And I don't think a lot of people realise that the same way that, you know, women have like other part-time jobs or full-time jobs mm. and play football. Like to some people that's absurd. Yeah, yeah. And to some people it's absurd that they're playing on like a normal pitch on like a Sunday league pitch. Mm -hmm. And it's like these things happen in women's football. Just because you don't see it doesn't mean it's not happening. Mm -hmm. So I really think it's important for people to come out and say like, this is what's going on. Let's do something about it. Because we can't really fight the battles that we don't know about. No, yeah, no, exactly. So, and you have a podcast with your friend Lippa. I do. I think she's outside. Yeah. I like her name. I think she's uh, it kind of, it comes from the fact that everyone kind of, when I say I do work in football, they're like, really? What? <laughs> oh, Tell me the they surprised? right now. Yeah, you know, like people who love to say stuff like when you say to them, oh, I kind of have like I'm a sports journalist or I talk about football. They're like, OK, cool. If you can name me the, like yeah. the top five players, name me 10 players from like the 2009, like 2012 FA Cup final. And I'm like, I don't know that off the top of my head. Yeah, but like, yeah. does it, and I'm sure you don't. Yeah, dude, you know. Yeah, 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 it's like yeah, a yeah, random yeah. challenge. Like, tell me like Juventus B team. I'm like, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> does anyone know that? <laughs> Just some mad stuff like that. But um, yeah, so that podcast is all about like bringing up like underrepresented stories in the community so like we talk a lot to people who are in grassroots and people who are in the local community who are doing stuff and using football yeah. as a power of like social impact change and half the communities i don't live in but being able to talk to people online makes it easier absolutely oh it's lovely <laughs> <laughs> well anyway this has been really nice but we need to come to an end i feel like i could sit here and talk to you guys for hours um it's been an absolute pleasure Quickly, where can everyone at home follow you on social media? We get this wrong every week. Okay, you, uh, no, you get it wrong, wrong every week. week. Um, on Instagram, I'm monkey with an I underscore DJ, and then I'm just monkey DJ on Twitter. I think, or it's the other way around. She's, she's yeah. made it up again. <laughs> I'm not sure. Yeah. <laughs> um, mine is Fadumo underscore OO. It's F A D U M O underscore OO on both, I think. It might not be, right. by the time someone finds We're it. We're making this all up. It might be something else. Rachel? Now you come to me, the social media is <laughs> kidding. Um, yeah, uh, I think I'm just Rachel Yankee 11 on both. Nice, nice yeah. and easy. Nice well, and thank you guys so much. It has been lovely. We'll be back with you guys after the next round of FAWSL results and games. Make sure you get involved. You can tweet us at COP19. You can join the Facebook group football is football and leave your comments because we want to feature them in the show until next time that's the team well this is hot chocolate <laughs> <laughs>